What's up guys, Kyle here again, and today we're gonna shoot out the PV6505MH and the EVH5153 LBX2. That's a lot of numbers and words and stuff. <laughs> Let's do it! Alright, hope you guys are doing great out there. Today, we're checking out these two amps. Now, as you guys know, I am a huge lover of the 5150 series. That includes anything 5150, 6505, even the Invective. I love all of the 5150 family amps. I think that they're just voiced incredibly. They sound so good. They're so easy to dial in. They sit and mix just right. So, every time these companies come out with a new amp in these series, I'm all in on it. I am game to try it and put it through its paces and see if I love it or not, so. So yeah, today on the cab, we've got the LBX2 from EVH and the 6505MH. The LBX2 traditionally has been my least favorite in the series of the EVH lunchbox heads. It just seems to be the hardest to balance the tone out in my opinion. The original one is still my favorite even compared to the Stealth. I just like that that one has both the blue and the red channel and it has really good tones dialed and it has really good tones inside of it. This one has the blue channel and the green channel so this gives you like a clean crunch and then a high gain drive channel. That opening clip we were shooting out the blue channel or the high gain channel versus the lead channel on the 6505MH. As always I had my Deadwell Duality DX on in front of the amp boosting it so we're going to turn that off. Keep both amps on this lead channel since this one does not have two different gain channels and we are gonna compare the lead channel to the lead channel on each amp because that's what we care about here at Belligerent Amateur Studios. Cleans are for stupid jerks and power cords or get the fuck out, right? Nah, there's room for everything. I'm just not good at most styles of guitar, so. All right, anyways, let's put everything back to noon. I'm also gonna dial the gains down to basically zero because the gain comes on on these pretty fast on each amp, so. Uh, it comes on much faster on the 6505MH than it does on the EVH, but even still, it gets saturated in a hurry, so we're gonna dial it to zero. I'm not gonna go over the features because I don't feel like it and you can't make me do it, so. No, but really, if you're considering both of these amps, I'm not here to give you a full review on, on all the capabilities of each of them. I'm just here to shoot out the high gain tones for you guys and see which one you think sounds better. All right, amps! <laughs> All right, enough of that. So we have kind of like a nice crunch tone going on with the gains just kind of uh, coming in and saturating a little bit. Uh, a little boxy, a little thin. This one actually sounds more like a like a JMP with the gain cranked up a little bit. Obviously not saturating, but it's it's got that fatness to it. And just like that, we are above one on the dial and we are pretty saturated. So the 6505MH is a lot smaller sounding and a lot boxier with everything at noon. Um, it just sounds weak, it sounds like a small amp. So I'm going to add some bass and some presence to the EQ. Ah, the EVH just sounds so much more alive than the 6505 at these settings. All right, let's give the 6505 a little bit of mids, a little bit of top end, a little bit of presence. Oh, there's just like literally an immediate connection that happens for me 
when I go over to the EVH. I hate to favor an amp so heavily in a demo video, but I'm literally just like, as soon as I kick that foot switch and go over to the EVH, I'm instantly enjoying myself more. I don't, it's really weird. The string slipped. As opposed to the 6505. My gate's kicking in. But uh, yeah, there's just something more uh, big amp-like. This one feels like a bigger amp to me. The 6505, uh, naturally, the gain on the 6505 has always been like over the top. And even when you dial it way down, it still has this weird buzzy character to it. <laughs> I will say with the low bump that we gave it, it sounds huge. Let's add a little bit of resonance on the back of the EVH. It's also at noon. I dialed it up just a tad. All right, let's get some more saturation on this one. Yeah, the EVH sounds just right. It sounds really good to my ears. Let's kick the gain up a little bit on the EVH or on the 6505. So again, EVH, more presence on top. It sounds more alive. The 6505 kind of feels boxier. There's like this uh, uh, blanket over the top thing that I think I mentioned in my stealth video that it just, you can't seem to, to dial it out of this amp. Whereas this one has a really nice top end presence, top end sparkle and cut. Oh, it sounds really, really good. Personally, I, I like the low end reaction, the 6505 MH a little bit better. It's punchier and um, tighter without a boost, but the EVH, once you put a boost in front of it, because it's fatter, it actually responds to the boost a little bit better. Let's kick the boost in on the Deadwell Duality and lower our gain a little bit. Ah, I love this EVH. It's my least favorite in the series, but I'm like creaming myself over it. There's like a boxiness to the mids that very much reminds me of a Marshall on this one for whatever reason. The 6505, man, it just, I can't get that blanket over the speakers thing to go away unless I, unless I dial the amp to be too harsh and then it's it's too harsh obviously so that's a bummer it also doesn't sound as clear it sounds a little messier ah oh, and the evh of course still sounds great again i try not to be biased in these reviews i try to let you guys make your own decisions and obviously you will anyways and that's totally fine but for me the EVH is like hands down the better amp. All right, so when I'm doing those chords I'm liking the low mid thing that the 6505 has going on. Maybe in a lower tuning, I would like the 6505 better because it has this like guttural low mid thing that sounds really, really <laughs> Whereas the mids on the EVH are still a little bit boxy.
So yeah, the 6505 is a little bit meaner on certain chords like that. And again, I think if you tuned it down, it would kind of maybe take the lead in my opinion, as far as overall voicing. The EVH, that mid is is not only reminiscent of a Marshall, but obvious, the, it reminds me of my Mark III a lot, my Mesa Mark III. It's got kind of like that boxy mid thing going on. <laughs> Uh, both sound great. Both are extremely saturated amps. What happens when we dial the mids back on both? The EVH keeps its voicing better, keeps its liveliness. It doesn't sound lifeless when you take the mids out of it, but again, I like them up a little bit. Let's keep them at noon. And then I had the 6505 at noon. The 6505 sounded slightly lifeless with the mids pulled out of it. Again, 6505, just there's not as much presence, not as much cut to the thing. It's got a punchier, tighter low end. When you kick a boost in, I, I like the amp less, but if you if I were to go without a boost, I'd probably choose a 6505 based on feel alone. Um, but the EVH just it sounds much better to me. It just it's a lot more livelier. The presence is the presence and the highs are in a better place than they are on the 6505 MH, in my opinion. So I'm going to grab a drop C guitar. All right, so I have my Gibson Les Paul Studio here in drop C. Let's see how this amp sounds. Drop down. Yeah, even tuned down, I think I still like the EVH better. All right, I had to switch my amp off. I've got some sort of weird interference. I gotta check my cable, I think it went bad, but uh, anyways, yeah. This has been the 5153 LBX2 versus the 6505 MH. What did you guys think? I know I spent a lot of time talking about what I thought, but I'd really love to hear what you guys heard on your end. Did you hear the differences that I was hearing? And if you did, or if you didn't, what did you hear and which amp did you end up liking better? Which one did you gravitate towards in these clips? Again, the six, the, ah, the 5150, hands down for me. Like it wouldn't even be a hesitation for me to take the 5150 over the 6505 MH. I just really dig it. I like where the mids are. I like where the highs and the presence are. It just feels more alive. The amp feels right to me. It takes a boost better because it's not as thinned out. 6505 MH, again, it's not a bad sounding amp by any means. I really like it on its own, but when I play it next to another amp, I tend to prefer the other Lunchbox size 5150s to it. So hope that this video was helpful for you guys. Again, if you dug the video, I'd really appreciate it. If you hit the like button, consider subscribing on your way out so you don't miss the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Kyle here again. We'll see you guys next time.